bedrock of all science is data. I sometimes say the most beautiful idea in science is generally worth nothing without the data, the observations, the experiments to back it up. Having a journal where you could submit a paper, have it properly reviewed, and then there was a record of what you had done, really clarified how science works. This is one of the most significant steps in the history of all of science. I think one of the most important things the Royal Society ever did, and it did it right at its beginning, was to invent the scientific journal with this journal, Philosophical Transactions, publishing articles describing the work. They could get it out there, they'd um, published it, they were owners of it, and there was a date on it, so they got priority. It's still very important now to have this Exactly. Isn't that interesting? That's basically the same thing as we have now. All the thousands, tens of thousands of scientific journals, they publish regularly, they're dated, they're peer-reviewed. It's all exactly the same model. When you're competing for a result, you want to be the one that got it first, and that means get it in the journal first. So it still holds a lot of importance in terms of motivation to getting out good, robust and results And that's exactly fast. the same in my field too. So Emily, this is the minutes of the Council of the Royal Society recording when Philosophical Transactions was established. So okay. ordered that the Philosophical Transactions, that's the journal, to be composed by Mr Oldenburg. The secretary of the Royal Society, Henry Oldenburg, played a key role. I suspect that he thought inventing the journal might reduce his workload to some extent. So instead of acting as the sort of spider in the middle of the web connecting everybody, it could be dealt with by a regular publication of a journal where the observations and data was set out. Printed the first Monday of every month, so a very mm -hmm. regular publication. Yeah, it is. Um, if there's sufficient matter for it. <laughs> so if he didn't have it, then he wouldn't publish it. And that the track be licensed by the Council of the Society. In other words, it's acceptable for publication. Mm -hmm. mm. What's in there would be peer review. That was the origin, really, yeah. of peer review. What peer review can do is just eliminate the rubbish. Um, but if you're going for a high-profile journal, then a peer reviewer will be making judgments as to how interesting it is. And sometimes um, they, they don't see that it's interesting, even if the science is quite good. So the fact we've got a range of journals does mean that research does get out there eventually, as long as it's sound. So this is the first um, Philosophical Transactions, Volume 1. Very exciting. So this is the very first pages of the very first journal. It was the beginning of peer review because council had to look at it, but it took a while for the whole process to get in place. Philosophical transactions, undertaking studies and labours of the ingenious in many considerable parts of the world. It's great language anyway. We're going through a revolution now in how we publish and we will see different ways of publishing and open access and electronic publishing and all of these things are interesting and will change the way that we do things but fundamentally it's based on the principles that we use to establish philosophical transactions, the journal invented by the Royal Society in 1665.